Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're actually going to look at a new component or feature in SwiftUI 3.0 called Async Image. So what does Async Image allow us to do? Well, like the name describes, it allows us to download images asynchronously from a URL and present it within our app. So we're going to look at how we can actually use this. So as you can see on the screen here, I've got a list of menu items and we've got some black boxes. So where the black boxes are, that's where we'll use async image. So let's get started. So this startup project is actually currently on my GitHub. So if you want to follow along, you can follow along. But what we're going to do is actually look at how we can use async image within our code. So just before we get started, um, this is just using a simple MVVM structure. So you can explore the code if you want to. But we're going to go into our food item view. And inside of here, you can see how we have a rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this rectangle with the async image view, and then we'll break it down. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So as you can see, if you're looking at our images, um, they're actually like not scaled very well, but we'll get to that in a second. But if we just break down the syntax for async image, the first parameter that you can actually use is URL. And this is where you pass in a URL string to where the resource is that you want to download asynchronously. And then on the async image, we apply a frame. Um, so a width of 100 and a height of 100. And we also add a clip shape so we can actually add some rounded rectangle styles onto our image view. So if you actually look at image, like I said before, it's not really scaled to fit within its container view that we specified here, which is 100 by 100 very well. So why is that? So this image, when it's, it's actually downloaded this from Wikipedia, it's actually got a frame which is way bigger than 100 or by 100. So what it's currently doing is it's downloading the image and it's just placing the center of the image inside of this view. So in order to fix this issue, what we actually need to do is use the other properties that we get with async image, which allows us to control the image and some other, you know, attributes. All right, cool. So as you can see, I'm on the async image documentation here. And like it says in the description, it's a view that asynchronously loads and displays an image. So if we actually scroll down to the overview for the second part, you can see here that we actually have two closures here. So the first closure allows us to resize our image because it returns the image that it successfully downloaded to us. And the second closure allows us to use a pl placeholder to basically give the user some kind of visual feedback that something's going on. Because if we were just to show like a gray box, then it might look like nothing's happening or maybe something's broken. So showing them a progress, you will actually show them that we're getting this resource. So these two closures are actually using um, view builders to actually return and apply styles onto the views that you want to use in these instances. All right, cool. So what we're going to do now is actually going to use the image content builder and also the placeholder content builder to apply some kind of views and visual feedback and resize that image properly. So let's do that now. So back in our food item view, I'm going to do a bit of typing and then I'll break this down. So as you can see here, uh, what we've got is our image. And what we're saying here is we want to resize our image so it fits within its you know, container, so parent view. And then we want to scale to fit. So scale to fit will make sure that it fits within the actual view rather than expands the whole view. And then we're going to clip a rounded rectangle shape onto this. So for some reason, I'm not too sure why, but I can't use this here. So I have to actually apply this modifier directly onto the image or else I just get the, you know, I don't get the corner radius effect. So that's why I've applied the clip shape directly onto the image here, as you can see. And then for our placeholder, if you saw it then, we have colors. So this color.random is actually an extension that I've built here. So it's a computer property where it just gets a random element from our array. Um, and then what we do is we apply a overlay placeholder. So we have a progress view onto it. 
So just so you can see this a bit more clearly, if I just zoom into one of these views, okay, cool. so if I just zoom into one of these views and just force this to like rebuild itself, you'll see that you can see the color and the progress view as well. And then finally, we apply a frame of 100 by 100 and we clip a shape onto the async image. So for the placeholder view, it will get that rounded rectangle effect that you're seeing here. All right, cool. What about if we actually want to handle our async image and it actually has an error, so it can't get an image for whatever reason. So async image actually has another feature called async image phase. So let's look at this in the documentation. So async image phase, if you scroll down to the bottom here and actually click on async image phase in documentation, it is an enum that allows us to access the image that's being downloaded. And we can also check for errors or else if none of these conditions are met, we can just show some kind of view as a placeholder. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at how we can use this to show a placeholder in the event that one of our image URL links is broken. So let's go back to our example here. And I'm again going to do a bit of typing and just show you how we can use this. So now let's look at this now. As you can see, it's working fine like it was before, but this time we actually only have one closure here and we have a property called phase. Well, that's what I've called it, phase. Um, and what we're doing here is we're accessing the image on the phase because image is actually optional. So we have to safely unwrap it. And if there is an image, then we're just going to apply the same styles that we did before. Alternatively, we have error as well. So if there is an error and it's not equal to nil, then we're going to show a placeholder, which we'll get to in a second, to display like a broken image. Or else if none of these two conditions are met, then we'll just show our progress view. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to force an error within our view model by having an invalid image URL. So let's go into our view model. And then on the very first image here, we'll just go up on X at the start of the URL so it breaks. And if we just resume this and load this now, you'll see now that we actually get the view that we specified if there is an error. So you can see here, we get an error view here and the rest of the images load up just fine. But looking at this, we can actually improve this. So this is one way of doing it. And this is what is specified in the documentation in terms of how to handle an async image phase. But in my opinion, I think we can make this more readable. So what we're going to do is rather than using this, we're actually going to use a switch statement. And the reason why we can use a switch statement is because if you remember, looking at the documentation, this async image phase is actually an item. So let's write out this as a switch statement and then break it down. So as you can see here, we're doing a switch on the phase and we have a few cases that we're gonna break down now. So we have success, which gives us an image. And as you can see, we don't actually have to safely unwrap the image. Um, the case automatically provides us with the image so we can apply modifiers onto it, which is pretty nice. Also as well, we have failure, which again, gives us the error if we need it. Now, obviously I'm not using it in this case, so what we could do alternatively is just remove this completely and just have it like so. And then if there's a failure, just display some kind of view. But if you want to access the error, I'm just showing you here how you can access the error and you might want to print it to the console or you may want to show some sort of text on the screen to the user, then you can access it from there. Also, we have another case empty, which is what we use for our placeholder when there's no image. And then finally, we have our extra case here called unknown default, which just means that if none of these cases are met, then it's going to um, default to just showing some kind of empty view. And if you actually look at our app on the right hand side, it looks the exact same as it did before, where we have our broken image, which is our failure image here, and the rest of our images on the screen here nicely presented for you to see. So in my opinion, this is a lot more readable um, for me in terms of switch statements and also it reduces the amount of unwrapping that you need to do because the cases just give you the object directly. So now that we've done this, what I want to do is actually add some kind of animation so we can actually, you know, 
see it nicely fade onto the screen. So in order for us to do this, we actually have to use a property in async image called transaction. So underneath our URL, let's use the transaction property to add in a ease in animation. So let's do that now. I said ease in, but let's just switch up. We'll use ease in and out. So with the animation transaction, what we're saying here is this is what we want to use to animate the async image into the view. So you can actually use any animation here that you want to. I've just chose ease in and out for this purpose. But if I actually rebuild the app and then just let it rerun, you'll see here that it kind of fades in and eases in and out. But what I want to do, I don't know if you realize, is that it's not really the best in terms of switching and between the different views that the async image phase provides us with. So in order to resolve this, what we're going to do is apply a transition onto our async image. So when it switches between the different types of views, we get a nice animation as well. So below our clip shape, let's add in a transition of scale and opacity so we get a nice scaling effect into our list. So let's do that now. So as you can see, if I just rebuild this now, you can see that we now get the scaling effect. So we like the image pops into the um, view with a nice animation. So what we're doing here is we're saying on the transition that we want the opacity to be combined with a scaling animation. So it does opacity and then scaling. But, you know, we could take this one step further. So what about if we actually wanted each image to animate in based on its position in the list? Well, we can actually do this as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually have to pass in the index for where this image is. So on our food item view, let's actually create a new constant called index, which will be of type in. And then what this will do is it will give us an error below here. Like so, and then we need to use the index property here, like so. And then we're just going to say zero for now, because it's just a preview. It doesn't really matter. And then at our content view, we should get an error here saying that it needs missing the index parameter. So what we need to do is we need to refactor our for each where we actually pass in the index for the item that we're currently looping through. So on our data, we'll go use the indices. As you can see, we're using the indices in our for each. And then what we're saying here is we're going to get the index, pass that into our food item view and then use that same index to access the item that we want to pass into our food item view as well. So now what we need to do is based on the index of the item, we want to add some kind of delay. So we're going to add a delay of half a second based on the index of the item. So it animates the view into the screen. So let's go into our food item view. And just to make this a bit more interactive, I'm actually going to change the transactions animation type to spring and use a delay here. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So just so this makes it a bit more readable, I'm going to show you this in a second. But as you can see, we've changed the type of animation to a spring animation. We've added a delay where it's based on the index times um, half a second. So what we want to do now is actually preview what this looks like. So I'm just gonna try this again. And as you can see, based on the index, it animates the image in order. So they don't all happen at the same time. So you get like a nice um, cascading effect. And if we actually take off, so we actually fix this broken image. So in our view model, let's just go to the URL. So the first one, and we'll remove that X. So as you can see, it now animates them in one by one. So it's looking pretty nice, which is pretty decent. So that's everything with async image. If you enjoyed this video, um, I'd love to hear some feedback as well. If you leave any comments in the comment section below. Also as well, I'd appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up if you liked the video as well. I gladly, you know, really appreciate that. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates whenever I release a brand new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.